Hey guys, Gattered Geek here, bringing you the SWOTOR Weekly Digest for April 26, 2013. With SWOTOR basking in the post-expansion glow, real news stories have been few and far between, but this week we have a few topics to Wednesday, BioWare released patch 2.0.1, one day later than originally intended because of a nasty bug involving the visual effects of buffs and debuffs. Lots of good stuff in here for a small bug fix patch, but I'll highlight the coolest of the updates. First off, there's a ton of changes to the cartel market, including the new Vice Commandant's Contraband Pack, and the stalwart Protector's Armor shown modeled here. There are also an insane number of new discounts to almost everything on the market, so if you've been holding off buying something like Artifact Equipment Authorization, or just want to stock up on weekly operations and Warzone passes for dirt cheap, now's the time. There is also a rather significant change to the space game in this patch, removing the elite commendations from their heroic space missions and replacing them with basic comms. I think this is a good change considering there's no real reason to reward people who do space combat with completely unrelated PvE gear. I think they should add a new space token for cosmetic gear on the space vendors that have minor passive buffs like increased missile damage and shield regenerate. Finally, Bioware caved a little bit on the demands for the removal of commendations caps. After Wednesday, planetary accommodations will have their cap doubled to 100, class accommodations will have their cap increased to 1000 with no weekly cap, and base accommodations will have a max cap of 1000 with a weekly cap of 500. It's good to see the continued back and forth between developers and players, but I still believe commendations caps are ham-fisted and really rub players the wrong way. And when I say that, I don't mean the hard cap that's been on Warzone commendations the entire game, I mean the limited time cap. You can set a ceiling so players don't start hoarding commendations for whatever reason, but once you start telling players, that's it, you're done for the week, you get into a murky territory. Not long after the patch was released, players were noticing an odd feature that wasn't listed in the patch notes. Whispering a character that was not currently online, but whose account was active on another character on the same server and faction, would forward the message to that too. The Golds quickly responded saying this is not intended to go live in 2.0.1, and it should be fixed in the future. It is noted that if you do not respond to the Whisper, the sender will not have any indication of the message's status, so if you wish to remain anonymous on an alt, like I do occasionally, simply ignore the message. There was significant moaning on the forums expressing concerns that the random warzone queue was not sufficiently random enough, giving a few anecdotal situations as evidence of such. John Crow, who has the awesome title of Gameplay Telemetry Analyst, responded stating that in their testing of over 250,000 Warzone queues, there were only 35 streaks of 6 of the same Warzone in a row, with a 15% chance of repeating a Warzone just once, a statistic that is in fact lower than the true random chance of 20%. If you're a fan of numbers, this guy's the man, and it brings back fond memories of Georg Zoller's graphs and tables from the Guild Summit. Public service announcement, the last boss of hard mode Aethys is currently bugged. It's not really a game breaker, but if you're unaware of it, it will probably kick your pug's butt. Currently, if multiple people are affected by a single player shackles, each player hit that was not the initial target cannot be broken out by allies. They may still use CC breakers to get out, but the easiest workaround is to spread out and avoid spreading the plague. Last but certainly not least, Wednesday this picture popped up on the Star Wars The Old Republic Facebook page. As of the recording, we have two pieces of the puzzle revealed, but community is pretty much all in agreement that this is a teaser leading up to the release of the Cathar. I highly doubt they would release a new race before a large game update like patch 2.1, which is still two to four weeks in the distance if we go by Bioware's release timeline. But I, like many others, are waiting for the Catman to be released to roll up a new alt, so the sooner the better. That's all the headlines for this week. As always, if you like what you've seen, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any SWOTOR video coverage. Until next week, this is Gaddock Teague, signing off.